moisture out of your ear rather than pushing it in. There's nothing else like it. WaxVac is quiet. Listen. Safe. Its unique safety guard prevents it from going too deep, like an ear thermometer. And effective. See how gently it vacs water and dirt, leaving your ears clean and dry. You just empty it out when you're done. Doctors everywhere warn against using cotton swabs to clean your ears. Don't use a cotton swab in your ear because it can cause significant damage. No one likes water in their ears. Don't pound your head. Use WaxVac instead. I know I shouldn't use cotton swabs to clean my ears. WaxVac seems like the perfect solution. Sometimes cotton swabs hurt. If they like it, I love it. What a great idea. Wax fat just makes sense. Stop using other ear cleaners that don't work and stop using cotton swabs that can damage your ears. Ow! Call and order the Wax Fact now for only $10. Every Wax Fact comes with eight soft, color coded silicone tips for every member of the family and this handy cleaning brush free. It even has this powerful examining light. But wait, there's more. Call now and we'll double the offer. You get two Wax Facts complete with 16 color coded tips and two cleaning brushes for only $10. Just pay additional processing. Wax Fact is the gentle, safe, and effective way to clean and dry your ears. Don't wait. Call now. To order wax back for $10 plus processing and handling, call 1-800-541-5375 or go to waxvac.com. That's 1-800-541-5375 or go to waxvac.com. Order now. The United States Bowling Congress is shaping the future of bowling, helping kids learn the sport the right way and awarding thousands of scholarships every year. USBC supports Special Olympics and America's best when they go for the gold as the home and heart of Team USA. We're reaching for new heights in research, raising the bar with spectacular national tournaments, and have raised millions of dollars to help fight cancer and support veterans. Visit bowl.com to learn more. Sitting in front of a camera all day is harder than it looks. So we bring in an expert to help us with our posture and delivery. I want you to imagine a little string pulling your head up. Where's the string? You're holding a towel under your armpits. Eyes on the teleprompter. Mm -hmm. Don't look up to see the highlight. Mm -hmm. Look through the highlight. You need a boatload of patience. You know what, forget everything I just said. Just be yourself. How's that feel? Feels pretty good. I like it too. The USBC Masters is brought to you by GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. The USBC, enhancing the bowling experience for millions of bowlers. To learn more, visit us on bowl.com. Barbasol, shave like a man. And by Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Bracket Builder Week tips off with a primetime doubleheader on ESPN Monday at 7. It's a pivotal biggie showdown as Michael Carter Williams and the Orange Face Vander Blue and the Golden Eagles. Then at 9, Ben McLemore leads the Jayhawks against Will Clyborne in the Cyclones. Big Monday part of Bracket Builder Week. Syracuse Marquette at 7, then Kansas Iowa State at 9 on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. Let's go down to Kimberly on the floor now for a report on our host, the USBC. The USBC began as the American Bowling Congress in 1895, and to this day, they are still leading the way as the governing body of the sport. Now, if you've not taken a look at the USBC lately, maybe you should take a second look. The United States Bowling Congress is more than what you see here on Sundays where the industry leaders in research with cutting edge technology on the lanes and off, and are literally leaving our mark on every pin, ball, and lane. USBC is vitally important because they set the worldwide standard, not only for bowling balls, but for pins, for lanes, rules. USBC is looked for to set the standard and set the playing rules that all of us follow and standardize this game. The USBC Open and Women's Championships are the largest participatory sports events in the world. Plus, USBC is always working to educate through a coaching department that is second to none. It's not just about coaching the bowlers, it's about coaching the coaches. USBC Coaching Department, what we focus on is making sure that the coaches have the best tools possible 
to make the bowlers at the grassroots level the best they can be. Your membership dollars power Team USA and support veterans, the Special Olympics, and the fight against cancer. This is really, really special to me because I had my own scare with breast cancer just this past April. And you look back and USBC has raised over $9 million for Bowl for the Cure. And that's just one of the charities that USBC is involved with. USBC, working every day to create lifelong bowlers. Thank you, Kimberly. To become one of the nearly two million members of the United States Bowling Congress, please visit bowl.com for more information. Coming up in just a moment, our next match, third-seeded Wes Malott taking on second-seeded Stuart Williams. Two big, strong bowlers looking for their first PBA major title. Come on back to North Brunswick, New Jersey. stops for three days ah! and all eyes are fixed on just one thing the Bassmaster Classic the best in the world are descending on Oklahoma's Grand Lake only one will emerge victorious don't miss the 2013 Bassmaster Classic starting Saturday only on ESPN2 America's freshest lineup is here at your tri-state Ford dealer See how Ford beats Toyota in EPA-rated fuel economy in every segment we compete. And with EcoBoost technology that delivers efficient power, Ford has you covered at the pump. So get to your Tri-State Ford dealer today and see why Ford is America's best-selling brand. Now get a 2013 Escape for just $159 a month for 24 months. Just $159. Only at your Tri-State Ford dealer. Powerlift gate with memory height. Standard. Adaptive remote start, standard. Keyless access, standard. And now featuring Cadillac Q that puts a world of content close at hand. All standard. The Cadillac SRX Luxury Collection. Because your life is anything but standard. Now lease this 2013 SRX crossover for around $439 a month. Visit CadillacTriState.com for this attractive offer. Welcome back to New Jersey and the USBC Masters live coverage on ESPN. Lon McCarron with Randy Peterson, Kimberly Bressler. You know, two soon to be inducted members of the PBA Hall of Fame are past winners of this Masters event, 2004 yeah, champ. Danny Wiseman, a 12-time yeah, tour winner. Yeah. And who can forget when he won the Masters at Miller Park? It was so amazing, that it. venue. And 2006 Masters winner Doug Kent of Newark, New York, won 10 PBA titles during his career, including four majors. And Dougie was known as one of the most versatile players out here. Yeah! Silky smooth, nicknamed Dougie Fresh. They will enjoy Hall of Fame induction ceremonies in Indianapolis on March 30th. If we look at our updated step ladder, number four and five seeds are gone it's left to the number two and three seeds right now Stuart Williams taking on Wes Malott 
the winner facing Jason Belmonte. The number two player is a PBA Tour champion with seven European Bowling Tour titles representing England. Beef Stew, Stuart Williams. 31-year-old <laughs> won the 2011 Viper Open for his only PBA title. <sighs> Best finish in a major is ninth at the 2011 World Championships. What a moment for this Brit. But what a match he has on his hands. That is Stuart Williams in a frame one nutshell. Oil pattern here at the USBC Masters, 39 feet in length, and it basically gave the players multiple angles. We saw Mika Koivuniemi going really straight from the outside part of the lane. You're going to see Stuart Williams and Wes Malott play that deep inside line. And then obviously the left-hander Parker had that straight left side all to himself. Now Wes Malott coming off his 255-248 win. <laughs> Malott opens with a strike. And we'd just like to add that on January 25th, the founder and CEO of Kegel, John Davis, suddenly passed away. John was a visionary and a pioneer in our sport. He loved the PBA and dedicated his life to preserving the integrity of bowling on a global scale. John was always a gentleman. He was truly nice to me every time I was around John, and I will miss him along with everybody else. And the PBA and myself would like to send our thoughts and prayers out to the Davis family. Wes Malott now trying to double. Oh, no. He says, I don't know. And that is why he knew it from the moment it left his fingers. Left of target, you hear the oh no, and right through the nose. Only this time, the seven pin standing with the 3 6 10. Doable, though. It's doable. Just get the ball to the right side of the three pin, slide it over into the seven. Key moment for Wes Malott here. Can't get it to kick enough. Too big a bite. Go, go, go. Open frame in the second for Malott. Go. And now the gravity of that is not lost on Stuart Williams, who defeated Wes Malott. Check out what he did to Adam Chase though, when he shot 832 at him. Williams won with a 626 <laughs> block just before that. I think he said he rolled about 630 in two games on that next match. Oh, oh. boy, he hands it right back to Wes Malott. And Wes Malott has new life. Very unusual, unique uh, form for Stuart Scott, or Stuart Williams, rather. He looks uh, like a regular power player until the release point, where he just kind of cuts that off and goes right through the nose with a four count. The good news for Williams is that Malott did that just before him. And he cleaned it up. Yeah. So back-to-back -back open frames for the two and three seeds. You know, what's interesting is that Stewart was a higher seed, so he chose to start on the left lane and finish on the right lane because in warm-ups, he was making comments to his tour consultant, Chris Schlimmer, that he had no idea what to do on the left lane. He goes, there's no way I'm going to finish the 10th frame on the left lane. I'll start there. So what does he do? He strikes first ball in the left lane and goes right through the nose on the right lane. Quite a, a likable guy, happy to talk to you. He makes new friends, feel like old mates in short order. But he's all business right now. Can that come back? He has not found his oh, line. Nice stop. Well, he threw a bad shot. You heard him say terrible shot, and Beefcakes is in trouble. Just gets this wide of target. You see how deep he's playing. He's actually left of Malott, and then he just opens the lane up too much, leaving the 2 4 10. And he converts the split. He's one of the most likable guys out here. And it's just a, it's a, it's a privilege to sit down and, and, and talk with Stu Williams. He's a 
Take a look using the brain to slide that two pin into the 10 and the ball takes out the four pin. What an entertaining guy. Lots and lots of fun, that man right there. So Malat now, maybe with a bit of mental regrouping as he was looking at his opponent, perhaps going back to back open frames, then gathers energy from converting that split. Malat knows what he needs to do there. And that's okay, not it. Check. Just might be one of those games, he's thinking, where you don't have to strike every frame as he did against Parker. Just well, kind of muscle your way through. It's one of those games where the lanes are going through transition as they do every ball that's thrown every game. And Wes Malott, he had a pretty nice go against Parker striking in 10 of 12 shots. And now, all of a sudden, he's going to have to start making some adjustments. An opening strike from each now is broken down into open frames and spares for each. He just looked over at his tour rep saying, hey, should I switch to the, the other ball? And See if he stays with the, nope, he's gonna make a ball change. He knows what he needs to get the job done. He says it's time for a change. West says the best tournament he ever bowled oh, was in this house it. during the 07 U.S. Open when he led that tournament and he gets the kick with Goldie. <laughs> nice. Well, never hurts to be a little lucky. He made the ball change. He says, oh, this one's got to pick up, and it barely did. Get a break Just catching a piece of the head pin, catches a nice break trip in the two pin. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant to do. West takes a seat now. Well, the thing about it is his opponent's not putting any pressure on him. So, you know, Wes can breathe easy as he's trying to figure out and micromanage the adjustments on this championship pair. Now, how confident is Williams now in his ball? Yeah. Oh, that was a good shot. Williams now trying to convert. Didn't quite get the kick he wanted. <laughs> That's a nice spare ball. This is your brain on bowling. He does convert Stuart Williams from England, as we said, getting more and more comfortable bowling on the lanes here in the US. My girlfriend um, lives in Phoenix, so I get a lot of exposure to Americans. So <laughs> overall, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with it now and, you know, my roommate, Patrick Allen's made the TV show on this tournament a number of times. I think he's up to four times now, so hopefully he can give me some advice, but he hasn't won yet, so <laughs> maybe it's not the most positive advice. Only one foreign-born player, I believe, has won this tournament, Mika Koivu Nien. So two players with a chance to add to that total from England, of course, Stuart Williams, and from Australia, top seed Jason Belmonte. Top of the fifth for Williams, down by three. And that come back. Now that's trouble on that side, Randy. Ah, dear. Well, I'm surprised he struck in the first frame, to be honest, looking at the last two shots. That looked like a pretty good shot, and it, this ball just labors and never comes off of the spot. I think Stuart's trying to create too much angle. Next time you watch Wes Malott on that lane, Wes is going a lot straighter. Less, less angle, getting the ball to pick up. He needs some more magic. The only other option for Stu is to go to something stronger on that left lane. We may have a conversation with his ball rep, see if there's something in there that might work better. Or maybe, maybe it's Stu. Right now, he's not even looking in the general vicinity of his, his tour consultant. Wes Malott, indeed, staying with that ball change on both lanes now. Wes Malott now, who dashed Mike Fagan's hopes of becoming the first back-to-back -back Masters winner since 1967. Beat Fagan in the opening round. Fagan double eliminated into the loser bracket as Malott fires back with a double. Oh, 
Well, and you, you know why he got a little pumped up over that? His opponent just opened, and he was working on a strike. That's what big-time players do. They step up, take advantage of the opening given by their opponents. Wes Malott now trying to deliver maximum pain to his opponent, Stuart Williams. Can he do it? Yes, he can! That's taking advantage of that trip two pin in the fourth frame as well. Wes Malott with a 38 pin advantage on Stuart Williams as each of these players vying to meet top seeded Jason Belmonte for the championship of the USBC Masters. Hello, kiddo. We're on the Oregon Trail. You're on a juice cleanse? Must be nice to choose what you eat. As if the snow rolls in, there's a good chance I'm making a meal out of your little great-great-uncle here. Eh. Listen, juice box, if you're not gonna eat like a man, could you at least shave like a man? Yeah! And stop talking about kale. There's a skin tag here, a skin tag there. Those bothersome, embarrassing skin tags pop up everywhere. Now get rid of them the fast, easy, natural way with Tag Away, the skin tag remover that naturally and painlessly eliminates pesky skin tags. Tag Away is a homeopathic topical remedy made from all natural plant extracts that help eliminate these harmless skin overgrowths without any pain. Simply apply all natural tag away as directed and skin tags will just dry out and fall away. Whether it's your neck or under your arms, tag away removes them all the natural way. Tag away's special formula contains natural plant extracts and the active ingredient Thuja Occidentalis, a pure essential oil recognized for its tag removing properties. It's officially monographed by the Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia Convention of the United States. Tag away puts that all natural power to work for you. Now you can avoid harsh chemicals or costly alternatives. Just a few drops a day and tag away gets rid of skin tags with no trouble, no scarring, and no pain. Tagaway works on all skin types and is safe for even your most sensitive areas. Don't be embarrassed or uncomfortable. Tagaway leaves your skin looking and feeling healthy and smooth again. Don't suffer with those bothersome skin tags any longer. As a part of this special television offer, you can order one bottle of Tagaway for just $19.99. That's enough for up to 60 applications. All natural Tagaway is proudly formulated in the USA to the highest standards of manufacture and guaranteed to remove your skin tags without pain or simply return the bottle for a full refund of the purchase price. But wait, order right now and get a second bottle of Tag Away absolutely free. This incredible $40 value is all yours for $19.99. Call or log on now. To order Tag Away for $19.99, call 1-800-710-5748 to order now and get a second bottle for free. So don't delay. Call 1-800-710-5748 or visit us online at mytagaway.com. like a hammer. They're the movies we saw and loved. And this year, they're just part of what makes the Oscars epic. Live Oscar Sunday is the entertainment event of the year, featuring a celebration of James Bond, a one-time only performance by Adele, and your favorite movies fighting for the biggest award in the world. Hosted by Seth MacFarlane, only on the Oscars. Live Oscar Sunday, tonight, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ABC. Download the Oscars app for my picks, backstage bass, and everything you need for Oscar Sunday. Welcome back to New Jersey, the Brunswick Zone Carolier. There you see the score, Stuart Williams, the second seed, trailing by 38 pins against third seed, Wes Malott. Earlier, Del Ballard Jr., the Storm Tour representative, was talking with both Stuart Williams and Wes Malott. I think, I think, I'm, I think I'm still going to hook it on the right okay. lane. Okay. I think I'm going to throw it straight on the left lane. Okay. Just because, there ought to be of old on just because I can't see that they're going to be the same. So, right, right, right. I mean, I've got one guess. I mean, I, I didn't think that one was that bad on the right lane. I moved. Right. I actually, I thought it was good I actually lane. moved an extra one. Okay. 
and just try to stay slow with it. It wasn't bad, and that's why I said, okay, I, I had to give it a chance because sure. I didn't want to go face. Yeah. And uh, I didn't because I mean, that, the first one was obviously deep, deep. Yeah. So anyhow, oh, you made the then we switched. Back. I missed it. So I. Dale Ballard, Junior Hall of Famer, give, giving some great advice. Stuart Williams is going to make a change, but only on the left lane. He's going to change balls. He's going to go much straighter. Try to get into that same zone that Wes Malad is playing. I think Wes is probably okay, even though the three-bagger that he's thrown was a little shaky with the trip to. Uh, he did go light mixer, and then he had the flush shot. So right now it's going to hook it on the right lane, and he's going to try to go straighter on the left lane. And a fine line that Dell Ballard Jr. has to walk too, isn't it? Working with both players here in this championship. Williams, you got a taste of the pressure these guys are under, trying to figure it out halfway through this match. Right. He's figured it out. Well, he just changed his mind because he wasn't going to change and go straight on both lanes. He, that's what he told Dell Ballard. He's not gone to a disturb. I don't know if he's going to throw the other ball on that left lane. He tried hooking it on the left lane. It was a disaster. He's going to stay with Disturbed on this left lane. And he's going to go straighter, I promise you. Williams' first strike since the opening frame in this match against Malott. Malott, who has struck four of the six frames. One open frame for Malott, two for Williams so far. Down by 38, Stuart Williams. Wow. It's not over yet! <laughs> it's not, not over yet! yet. <laughs> I mean, that's a good 15 boards right with a ball change. He takes his hand out of it, goes nice and firm and direct, and goes flush, flush, back-to-back -back shots to let Wes Malott know, hey, this isn't over. Bit of a wry smile on Williams' face, and that also lets Wes Malott know this ain't over. Maybe trying to get into Wes's head. Williams loves the mind games of bowling. He loves... Off. The match play leading up to this stepladder format because there's more opportunity for head play with your opponent. Wes does a lot of this throughout competition, adjusting tape in his thumb hole. <coughs> he uses a lot of rosin and he's always adjusting tape in that thumb. Well, the message from Williams was sent loud and clear and received by Wes Malott that maybe Williams has figured something out. A lot, though, has to be confident just to keep up what he's been doing, working on a three-bagger. Wes Malott keeps doing what he's been doing. Nice adjustment. He goes to the gold ball. He stays in that same kind of zone. He doesn't try to open lanes up too much. And he had something that nobody else had this week. With that release, he could get the ball to feed to the right and recover off the spot down lane like nobody nobody else could. And that's why he led all averages at the 2013 USO, excuse me, USBC Masters. What a lineup in this step ladder finals for this the second major of the PBA season. And Randy, the oil pattern, brings so many options to the players. And you, you called it. You said it was going to be fun to watch. There's so many options of attack, and they're using it. Oh, and Wes Malott now kicking Four, six, himself. Seven, well, it looked like he just got too much hand in this shot here. The ball comes off of the spot and goes sideways. Looking for a miracle spare. Just content with the two. Well, you got to watch the splits here, too, because as we saw earlier in the telecast, Mika Poivu and Yemi bouncing the 10 pin out, converting the 7 10 split. You can bounce pins out here, throwing it hard and straight at splits. But right now, Stuart Williams makes the big change. He's working on a double. Two he can chance. cut the deficit with two more strikes to just three pins. What a time in this game for Stuart Williams to figure it out just as Malat stumbles with an open frame in the eighth. But indeed, has Williams figured it out? We'll find out right now. Oh boy. Look out. Come on, let go of it, come on. It's not difficult. Just let go of it. Come on. Well, this is just a big pull left shot. 
You can see this is a good three, four arrows left of the last ball that he threw on the right lane. And he's just disgusted with himself throwing a bad shot. The pressure of the moment perhaps bearing down on Stuart Williams. And that had some mustard on it. That had some anger with it. Uh, here's what Stuart was doing on the pair prior to the change. You can see he's trying to move in and really circle it. But here in the seventh frame, he oh, it was about 15 to 18 boards right. And goes with that straight thumb shot. Unfortunately, the last shot on the right lane was left of target. Now he needs to regroup, give himself some kind of chance. He can still strike out for 198. A lot gave him the chance. Williams did not take advantage of it. He's got to try to do maximum damage here. Ah, I needed my roll too. Two seconds. Well, he's referring to the nice trip two pin yeah. that West Malak carried earlier in the match. Looking for the roll two. Instead, he leaves a two seven. Quickly to convert the spare. Stuart Williams. He got it. Well, not textbook, but it's still a conversion. Big trouble now. West Malott needs to just fill frames. There's nothing Stuart Williams can do. West Malott's at 203 right now. In fact, if he marks here, he really doesn't need to do anything in the 10th except keep it on the lane. See the trophy on the left edge of your screen, USBC Masters trophy. One more match to be contested after this one. Top seat Jason Belmonte waiting that's in the wing. He says, that's better. And he's right. Yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote now, because even with an open frame in the 10th, West is going to be in the 190s, and the best Stuart Williams can shoot is 186. But West needs to figure something out and figure it out in a hurry on the left lane, because I don't think 2-0 is going to be enough to beat Jason Belmonte. Well, in this semifinal match, maybe he was working on a new nickname, Strikes Enough, West Malott. <laughs> I think he likes the other one better. Because uh, Stuart Williams, so far, just with three strikes in this match, three open frames. Trust it that it'll come back. My now, gosh. how is this going to play into Malott's mind going forward? Well, I, I'm going to get go out on a limb and say Belmonte is going to make West Malott finish on the left lane. The left lane looks to be the tougher of the two for West Malott. Both players will be trying to win their first ever major. There's going to be a lot of nerves involved, but West has to figure this lane out. This next shot for West Malott, even though the match is over, is huge because this basically gives him the read and reconfirms in his mind how he needs to play the left lane. So Wes Milan already playing the championship Ooh, match with this ball here in his mind. He has to throw his best shot here to set his mind in the proper place for the championship match against Belmonte. Wow. Let's see what happens. <laughs> well survived. Huh? I said nice survival. <laughs> These two pros, good friends. There is Jason Belmonte, and you see that the monkey, he's trying to get off his back. Anytime the lanes start to go through transition and get gross and ugly like they appear to be doing right Amazing now. How easy it is when that's got to favor Jason Belmonte with all the power and the speed and the stuff that he can put on a bowling ball, it's almost unfair. Wes Malott's gonna have his hands full in the title match. So Stuart Williams with one PBA title already won, does not come through with a victory here to give himself a chance for his first major. Have been fine. And now he's doing a post-mortem on his match right now with Del Ballard Jr. As he says, maybe now I figured that out here with two in the tenth so far. Fourth year pro will have his best finish in a major of his PBA career, but it's not enough as Wes Malott wins a 202, 185. When we come back, top seeded Jason Belmonte will try to break his streak of not winning majors. Jack Lang's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Mm.